Welcome, everyone, as you come in. Welcome, everybody, to the Keystone Financial Studios. As you can see, Jeremy and I are here live. For those of you who are on Facebook, welcome. For those of you who are on Zoom, welcome. Um, and then after the fact, we're going to record this as well, just so you know. So after the fact, uh, this will be available on our YouTube channel. Usually by the end of the day, we'll have that posted. So you'll be able to access that. Uh, it's very shareable. I will point that out that this is a particular topic that I think a lot of people will want to share or want to reaccess in the future. You may want to go back and listen to this. That is where that lives. And the best way to locate that is just keystonefinancial.com. And then up in the upper right-hand corner, there's the little social media icons. Click on the YouTube one. That'll take you to our YouTube channel. Absolutely. So we will get started here in just a couple minutes. But uh, as always, we have that Q&A feature uh, up if you are lucky enough to be online live with us. So please look at the uh, uh, Q&A feature. If you do have any questions along the way, we'll try to address those at the end of our presentation. That's a benefit of being here early. You've got yeah, a backstage pass. <laughs> Getting into you, you've got the VIP pass, right? So, VIP. Yeah. But yeah, this is a topic I, I think a lot of people are interested in. We have have a lot of people registered actually to this one and a lot of people have mentioned too just anecdotally you know in conversations we've had the last few weeks that this is one that they were really glad that we were going to be presenting on yeah this is a topic that we definitely get a lot of questions about mm -hmm. uh, it comes up a lot in conversation uh especially as our clients age and their parents age and and whatnot yep that's it's happening you yeah. know part of life so We'll give people a few more seconds here and get started right at the top of the hour. But glad you're here. Uh, you definitely have the ability to interact with us as well. And we hope that you will ask questions. We will be reserving a lot of those until the end, just so you know. So uh, if there's anything that you want us to cover and it's maybe something private, uh, certainly just email us directly. Uh, you can email us, uh, josh at keystonefinancial.com, jeremy at keystonefinancial.com. A uh, great way to kind of start a conversation, or if you need to make us a, uh, an introduction to somebody that you'd like us to talk to. Yeah, absolutely. So that is the top of the hour. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Keystone Financial Studios. You've got Josh and Jeremy here today. We are both certified financial planners, which means that that's the gold standard when it comes to our industry. You really want to make sure that the person's a CFP. That means that not only are they experienced, there's a certain number of years of experience. They've had to go through some pretty rigorous educational requirements, but also uh, we're held to a pretty high standard. We're considered fiduciaries. If you call yourselves a CFP, you hold yourself out as a certified financial planner, you are automatically a fiduciary. So you might have heard some of that. In other words, that sometimes people can kind of take that hat on and off and say, well, now I'm a fiduciary, now I'm not. If you're a CFP, you are a fiduciary at all times. So it's something to make sure that you've got when you're talking to somebody like us. It's true. You really can't turn it off, can you? No, can't. Not at all. No, today's topic is one that's been sought after for a while. And we uh, call it Things I Learned, A Caregiver's Journey. And luckily, you know, so far at least, luckily, neither you nor I have been full-time caregivers. Um, and it, it may happen. I mean, it's, it's time may come, right? We've got parents that are getting older. Absolutely. And so uh, that may come. But we uh, have been through a lot of situations, as you can imagine, through hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands over the years of conversations with people that have been going through this. A lot of things that we've learned through them and a lot of things that they've shared with us that they wish that they would have known before they went into that caregiving situation. Absolutely. So, yeah, as as you're uh, going through this today and as we're talking about it, that's that's really kind of the the way that we're looking at this and presenting this, right? Mm -hmm. Is this is yeah. just a conglomeration of topics that uh, really we have kind of gleaned off of clients and people we know and others over the years that we've been doing this of, of things that people continue to say, I wish I had known this, I wish I had known that, yeah. uh, and how to kind of process through a lot of this stuff. Yeah, and there are a lot of great books and resources and things like that, but there's really no replacement for actually having had the experience or be able to talk to somebody who had the experience. Absolutely. Uh, it's not just theory, in other words. Uh, a couple of things as we get started here, as always, our disclaimer. Um, so attorneys wrote this and had fun doing it, I'm sure. Uh, basically, what we're talking about today is just our opinions 
Uh, as you can imagine, everything is very individual when it comes to financial planning topics, and especially this one, uh, when it comes to, to finance, to caregiving situations. So don't uh, don't take this to the bank, right? These are just our opinions and experiences that we've had that uh, we're sharing. Um, so certainly talk with your own certified financial planner, uh, which hopefully is us, right? but talk with your own certified financial planner uh, or a medical professional, legal professional, tax professional, whatever uh, kind of applies to the situation. Uh, make sure that you're actually doing your own due diligence on that. Absolutely. Yeah. So really today, uh, kind of our agenda for the day is, is, you know, give you some tips and techniques for some various things as they come up, you know, uh, record keeping, uh, living in the moment, you know, looking at your available resources, uh, et cetera. And then really kind of all the way through it, you know, mm -hmm. how do you get back on your feet after you're no longer a caregiver? Right. Yep. Absolutely. So there's a, a lot of stuff that we're going to hit today. Uh, we probably could take any one of these topics and talk for a whole hour easily um, and, and give you very practical examples, mm -hmm. right? But we're going to fly through a lot of this. Uh, but I think you're going to find that not only is it an opportunity to at least introduce the topic, but second of all, we do have a resource at the end that we'll be able to send you. Um, if it's helpful for you, we've got a caregiver's guide that we'll be able to send out and uh, something that you can kind of use as a framework, at least in your own situation. Yeah, absolutely. Something to get you started. Right? Yeah. So they, uh, like we said, you know, the, the one thing that we've been able to glean from a lot of folks is things that they wish they would have known um, yeah, you know, after they kind of go through that caregiver experience, uh, what they wish they would have known. Yeah. So these are kind of random, right? There, there's a lot of stuff, but one of them, uh, and you think through it, right, is the handicap stall. Um, if if you need it, then that's the only stall in the restroom, right, that that person is going to be able to access. So only using the handicap stall if you're actually needing it, if you, if you actually need that. Uh, because the caregiver, probably if you're if you've got a caregiver and the individual, uh, probably need more space, right? So leaving that open, and you know, I never thought of that before until it came up. But you know what? That's it's true. Yeah, absolutely, it, it is it's something I think we've probably all done. Hey, there's an open stall right there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So. so leaving below your means is another one. We talk with clients about that all the time. Uh, you probably mm -hmm. have heard us talk about the 4% rule uh, while you're retired. In other words, not taking out more than 4% per year out of your portfolio uh, while you're working, living below your means. In other words, not spending it all, taking ideally 20% uh, while you're still working. You're taking 20%, whether it's through 401k, other savings that you're putting aside that money for yourself for the future. One of those reasons is that it may not be something that's planned, right? It, it could Absolutely. be that you end up leaving work early to care for somebody, or it could be for your own care down the road. Uh, it could be some long-term care expenses later on in your retirement that uh, you'll need to access some funds for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, really what we've heard, I think, from a lot of people over the years is really understanding what it really means, the in sickness and in health. Yeah. Um, when when you do become a caregiver, that takes on a whole new meaning. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Much deeper meaning. And so really kind of makes you think about that. And then, of course, um, you know, practicing mindfulness and self-care. And so this is one I think we hear more often than not mm -hmm. from yeah, clients absolutely. is that, uh, you know, just being inside the moment at any given time and and how easy it is that once you are a caregiver to really um Kind of let yourself go. All your focus is on that person that you're caring for, right? Yeah. And so then you start to neglect your own self care and and your well being as well, which is not a good thing. Yeah, yeah, we have heard that time and time again, and that that old metaphor about the oxygen mask. Mm -hmm. When you, you hear that every time you get on a flight, right? Oxygen mask on yourself first, then help. You know, yeah. whoever you're caring for, right? It could actually be somebody that's uh, an adult, but it could be a child, yeah. something like that. So that oxygen mask, uh, if if you don't have that on, you're not going to be good for anybody else. So we've heard that from a lot of people that they they can really get drained very, very easily from being a, a, a caregiver. It's a huge blessing, right, that they're in that position. Uh, they're willing to do that, but it also could be really draining. Absolutely. And then, of course, it's this really this entire thing is about, you know, helping someone just live with dignity, mm -hmm. right? And so these are loved ones that you're typically caring for. And, and uh, it's, it can be a rough time, but mm -hmm. helping them kind of get through the last bit of it with dignity that, you know, they've lived with their entire life. It's an important topic. Yeah. Yep. Sure is. 
So record keeping uh, from a practical standpoint, and again, this is in some of the resources that we have available to you afterwards, the record keeping is crucial, especially if you're kind of the one that's the point person, right? If, if you're the one who kind of has the has the ball and is running with it, then that means that everybody is looking to you, right? It, it could mm -hmm. be if you've got other siblings, other people maybe that, that are in the family, uh, somebody has stepped up. Clearly, if, if there's a caregiver situation, somebody has kind of stepped up. That means that they're probably going to doctor's appointments. They're probably taking a lot of notes. And that's really, really important because you're not sure when you're going to need that. So figuring out something that works for you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's that's a good point too, Josh, mm -hmm. is that it's yeah. it's there's not one right or wrong way to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's finding a way that really works for you. And so I think probably the biggest thing is, you know, you might consider yourself a really great note taker, mm -hmm. right? That you can sit in any appointment, take some really good notes. Uh, but I think one of the things we hear most from people is the accessibility of those notes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so you can take really good notes, but then as soon as you need them, oh, no, where did I put that note? Or where is that notebook? Right. right. And so uh, really having uh, maybe a mobile app or something of that nature where you can take your notes, but then you know exactly where it is when you need it, if you're at home, if you're away, so that you can access those things right away when you do need them. Yeah. And so an example we have uh, we sometimes will give is using the notes feature on your iPhone, on your Android, whatever you're using for a, a personal device. Uh, and then, of course, there's all kinds of apps. You can use Evernote. There, there's all kinds of things that you can kind of use. But trying to keep it simple and keeping it in one place, so having a notes feature where you can put the data in, you can put the notes and details of, of what needs to happen and putting it in order. So you can kind of see a progression, right, of, of a various uh, you know notes you've been listening to doctors and other professionals uh, kind of talking you know, on those meetings. You don't know when you're going to need that. And so, again, it could be that a paper journal is not as helpful, um, right? You need to access it because who knows? You could be on vacation or something like that mm -hmm. all of a sudden mom falls, something like that, right? And and now you need to be able to access, you know, what medications is she on and uh, what dosage, right? Uh, and uh, maybe some other notes as far as, uh, you know, instructions that they had given. So uh, it's pretty important, right, to stay organized. Absolutely. Stay organized, you know, keep it safe, password protected mm -hmm. as well, because yeah. we're really thinking these are, you know, this is medical stuff and, mm -hmm. and whatnot about a loved one. So it's things you want to keep, you know, uh, uh, safe as well. But then in addition to all of that, you know, uh, also for life after or during, uh, keeping words of encouragement there, mm -hmm. you know, things that kind of yeah. keep you going because being a caregiver can be draining. If yeah. you are in that boat now, you already know this. If you've seen someone go through this, mm -hmm. you already know this. It, it can be. So having those words of encouragement there but also keeping a list of your future to do's, mm -hmm. right? So just like we were saying that self, that self care thing. So yeah. a, a lot of what we hear is that, you know, people get in this care, um, this, this life of giving care, being that primary caregiver mm -hmm. and everything that they were focused on or their retirement or whatever it is kind of takes that back seat, mm -hmm. but it's just as important to, you know, keep track of all of those. Well, I'd really like to do this when, I can, yeah. you know, and, and making a list of those and keeping those for future reference. Yeah, having a capture list, I, I think in, in a lot of cases, we even do that at Keystone too, right? When we come Absolutely. up with, with the ideas, oh, we should do this, we should do that, right? Uh, but you can't do everything, you mm -hmm. know, you can't do everything at the same time. So having a parking lot or having having a capture list, uh, that can ac actually reduce anxiety too, uh, because you'll know that it's there, you can get to it at some point, but not now. Right. It, it's something that'll be there when the time comes and you've got the capacity to be able to handle those things. And it's also a great place too, from a, from a help standpoint, because when you have helpers uh, that kind of step up and say, Hey, how can I help? You might go to that capture list, right? And there, there might be things that they can do, right? That they can kind of take off your plate. Yeah. That's a great point. Absolutely. And then of course, uh, living in the moment. So what is, what does that mean to you, Josh, living in the moment? Yeah, so basically, uh, you know, being able to let go of things quickly, um, you know, we, we always talk about that, um, that the longer the, the 90 second rule, sometimes we, we use that the 90 second rule in our family as far as letting stuff go. Um, so you can get frustrated, mad, whatever, but the longer you hang on to stuff or, or hang on to anxiety, uh, the tougher the, the things could be. Also, uh, just to, you know, letting things go from a, an expectation standpoint, right, of, of what you thought your day was going to look like, what you thought your life was going to look like, right? Mm -hmm. You might have thought you'd be traveling, for example, in, in your retirement, 
but you're actually being a caregiver. We've seen that happen in a number of client situations where they thought they were going to work longer. They thought they would kind of operate their business longer and then life kind of happens, right? And it changes. Absolutely. So it could be we're, we're completely re, uh, resetting our expectations and kind of our def definition of what success might look like. And, and again, that could just come down to the day too. Um, you know, your your day happens. And I think for all of us, right, we kind of think we have an idea of what our day is going to look like and then life right. shows up, right? And, and that certainly would be the case when you're taking care of other people. We have that all the time. We, we both have a bunch of kids running around and right, that happens every day, right? You, Absolutely. You, you don't know what they're going to need either. Absolutely. Yeah. So just, yeah, the, the idea of learning to be able to be flexible and just adjust on the fly because mm -hmm. i think that happens more often than not and for some people that's a little bit harder if you're you know you you're regular to your schedule it doesn't mean you can't have a schedule mm -hmm. right but just be prepared for the fact that every day is not necessarily going to go according to schedule yeah yeah for right. sure yeah and, and then be mindful uh mindfulness uh really i think the definition of that is just being present yeah, I, I think sometimes anxiety creeps in. They say that that uh, when we get anxious about anything, it's usually because we're we're afraid about the future, right? Uh, we're so focused on the future that we can't really focus on now, and and so a lot of anxiety can build up. And the reality is, the the future to a large extent we can't control. A lot of that we we don't know what's going to happen, whether it's with our family, with our health, with the stock market, you know, all, all kinds of stuff, right? We, we, uh, we kind of live in that world, uh, but just uh, uh, doing our best to stay present and be focused on what, what's happening now, what we can control right now. And then uh, Jeremy, do you think that Die Hard is a Christmas movie or a Christmas movie? I'm definitely in the, in the camp of Die Hard is a Christmas it is, movie. It is. It is. I haven't watched it yet this season, but it's on my list. Uh, so you might remember, and we, we kind of joke about this, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, when John McClane, he, he gets off the airplane, he's all anxious and everything. And oh, yeah. he uses some advice to, to curl his uh, curl his toes, make fists with your, your toes, right? Right. Yeah. Walk around on the carpet. And yeah, and that's really the whole idea behind that too, mm -hmm. is just, you know, whatever, whatever thing it takes for you to just get back into that moment, right? Yeah. Because this is going to stress you out. It's going to cause a lot of crazy anxiety in your life. So being able to, you know, live in that minute, in that moment, be yeah. present and uh, find a way, though, to take care of your anxiety and your stress levels. Yeah, no have, if it's have a short list. Yeah, have a short list of stuff that works for you. Maybe it's prayer. Maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's just breathing. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Uh, maybe it's taking a short walk. Uh, you know, something that you can do to kind of reground yourself and, and kind of get back, uh, you know, because again, it's the oxygen mask thing, right? You've got to take care of yourself. Uh, otherwise, you really can't care for the the person that you're caring for. Absolutely. Yep. And then uh, really understanding that you are not alone in this, right? You don't have to be alone in this if you yeah. really don't want to be. Yeah. Right? And that's one thing we're told a lot um, from folks. And again, we've experienced this with our own families, with, with clients, friends, um, mm -hmm. is that it can be very isolating. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are a number of resources out there. Uh, so there's uh, plenty of online caring support groups, mm -hmm. people who have gone through this before, who have really great ideas, tips and tricks to get through it. Um, other uh, organizations out there, caringbridge.org, uh, we've been told is a really good one as well. Um, easy way to keep uh, family up to date mm -hmm. about what's going yeah. on. Yeah. We've yeah, had that in our own family, have used that. And mm -hmm. yeah, I've been part of that with other people it is super helpful and it can be helpful for for you too as the caregiver because you're not maybe having to to re-communicate it individually to everybody over absolutely. and over again that could be pretty draining too absolutely yeah yep and then you know kind of uh, i think one big thing is planning ahead so uh if you are a caregiver and all of a sudden say you bring mom or dad into the home with you mm -hmm. uh the different kinds of things that you have to consider uh, in order to keep them safe, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. a lot of the things that we hear about, obviously, is maybe adjustments to the bathroom, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's a lift for the bathroom or a new tub that's a walk-in tub, yep. something of that nature. Yeah, right? that has a dollar know, cost. It's installing, uh, installing the the hand uh, shower thing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that, you know, we really think about, right? You know, when we're maybe younger and, you know, not having, you know, some difficulties like that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And keeping in mind, too, that in some cases you want to watch out for this because it can have a financial impact. Certainly there can be costs, but also uh, sometimes long term care insurance, if they have long term care insurance, sometimes that that actually will cover some of those costs, part or all of it. Um, sometimes if they qualify for other benefits, Medicare, things like that, or hospice care, sometimes 
there are, there is some assistance for that. So taking advantage, right? If, if there are some benefits that they're eligible for, uh, staying up on that too, right? And Absolutely. again, some of the support groups, you know, can communicate some of that, some of that sharing of information. It's kind of what you don't know, right? That other people have been through. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, talking about other, other care, when it does reach a point, and I think it does eventually with everybody, reach a point where you just need more professional care, mm -hmm. right? is uh, knowing who to reach out to, when to ask about that. And I think the thing we've heard probably most from people is that they they waited maybe a little bit too soon. Mm -hmm. We hear that all the time. Waited too long, right, to, yeah. to actually inquire about that and get mm -hmm. that moving. Yeah, and sometimes we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but... Um... Um, you know, sometimes it's it's maybe something that's not a full time caregiver. It may not be that they're in a you know facility care yet, but it could be some somebody who kind of comes in and helps out. It could even be not long term care. Maybe it's just somebody who comes in and cleans the house, right? Absolutely. Uh, there could be other kind of ways you can get some help. So uh, use that and use it liberally, um, right? So don't try to do it all yourself uh, because uh, eventually you will wear out, and if you wear out, then who's going to take care of mom or dad or whoever it is? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So again, all about that self-care yeah that can be expensive uh long-term care we get that mm -hmm. question all the time as far as kind of some fear about uh, either uh maybe a parent or or maybe even a spouse and gosh what's going to happen how expensive yeah. can we afford that uh, are we going to run out of money right there's a lot of different uh you know kind of points there that are um, absolutely sometimes don't have good answers right which which is tough because you know modern day long-term care policies are not the same as you could find 10 15 20 years ago right. right but obviously the cost is a real cost so uh if you think about it your average cost of a nursing home per day and this is an average mm -hmm. right so it's under there can be a lot more than this but 255 dollars a day right uh that works out to what did we say about ninety thousand dollars a yeah, year just over at that yeah um, and then, of course, the uh, another kind of statistic is that the average length of long term care time is actually about three years. Right. right? Yeah. And so we've seen that go uh, longer than that. We've seen that go shorter than that. But again, average length, if you can think about that, about 90 grand per year for three years. Mm -hmm. That adds up, right? Yeah, and so the the government definition for long term care. By the way, you might wonder, well, what does that actually mean, right? Long term care, but at least from the government standpoint, that's uh, either a cognitive impairment, right, like dementia, Alzheimer's, or it's needing assistance with what ca are called uh, activities of daily living (ADLs). They'll call that Absolutely. activities of daily living. Um, and you can easily Google that as far as kind of a full list of what those things are, but it's more physical care, things that you're, you're just not able yeah. maybe to take care of yourself, you know, being physically. able to feed yourself, yeah. being able to bathe yourself, right. going right. to the bathroom. Yep. There's yep. three of them right there. Yep, absolutely. So yeah. it's two or more activities of daily living typically that will be, you know, the trigger. If you have long-term care mm -hmm. insurance or something like that, that's usually what's going to actually trigger the benefits. Uh, so, and, and there are different levels of long-term care. There's home health care, uh, all the way up to skilled nursing care. So yeah. there, there's this whole progression. And sometimes uh, long-term care uh, kind of communities even will have a progression. My parents actually just moved into a, a kind of a continued care community where they're in an independent, they're in a patio home right right, right now, uh, where it's kind of a retirement community. But there are resources there, right, as they might need help down the road uh, to be able to have home health care come in, mm -hmm. um, even to to move, you know, and have some level of facility care. So I don't know, maybe that'll be needed, maybe it's not, but it, it's it's there as a resource. And, uh, you know, having professional help too, usually communities and facilities like that will have really good resources with helping the family and helping Absolutely. people kind of assess what is actually needed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and the varying ways. And so it's different for everybody, too, of how you choose to, you know, pay for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's better to think ahead, I think, on this plan ahead for this than to have to try to scramble after the fact and say, how are we going to pay for this? Right. You know, and so uh, these are kind of tough conversations that you have to have mm -hmm. and you have to have them with family. Maybe it's splitting costs with family. Mm -hmm. You know, if there is an insurance option, maybe that's a good option for you. Um Always, you know, I think I, I tend to think about it when we go down the Medicaid route. That's kind of last mm -hmm. resort yeah. kind of thing because yeah. there are spend downs associated with that. It's very expensive until you get there. And it's not necessarily the best level of care, but yeah. it's an option. Yeah. Medicare. Uh, and this is not a long term care seminar. Right. But, you know, Medi right. Medicare is may. I mean, there may be some level of care, but it's for a very limited amount of time. Typically, no more than 90 days Absolutely. worth of, of help very that short. Medicare 
So kind of a longer term care situation, um, you know, is what we're talking about. And, and Medicaid, uh, we're not attorneys, right? It's a whole other thing. But, you know, uh, attorneys tell us, though, that there are kind of limits, that there, uh, there mm-hmm. are spend downs and so forth that before Medicaid will actually kick in and start paying benefits. So, uh, yeah, that's a whole other seminar. <laughs> right? But, yeah, absolutely. So and, you know, there are other options. So there's, um, you know, in-home nursing care. So average cost of that. Uh, per month. I think we hear a lot of that as well, mm-hmm. is that, you know, mm-hmm. people want to stay in their home as mm-hmm. long as mm-hmm. possible. Absolutely. Uh, which makes sense, right? That's where you're most, most comfortable. But again, your average, average term of care is about three years, uh, average cost for in-home care, uh, you know, right around that 5,000 mark per mm-hmm. month, depending yeah. on how much how many services you actually need. Yeah. And the key word here is average. Average. Right. Yes. Because I'm sure you know, we'll get some people that might in the comments or afterwards, they'll be like, oh, uh, yeah, that's way less than what we're paying for mom or you know, whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. So again, it's an average. It's going to depend on where you live, what part of the country uh, that, that can vary greatly. Uh, can also highly depend on what level of services are, are being provided. Uh, whether they, if it's a facility care, they have a private room, a shared room, um, and, and there's a whole kind of spectrum. Cognitive we, we, support. Yeah, cognitive I mean, support. Yeah, yeah, memory yep. care. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, but really, uh, yeah, and then kind of going into that, you know, handling cognitive issues, I think this is probably uh, where we see the most really for this is yeah, that one uh, of the hardest for sure it, it really yeah. is uh and so just kind of you know learning to be prepared again keeping good notes on those um but then as the condition progresses as well you know yeah. what are the triggers what are the patterns uh how does this all work work out and how is it building over time yeah yeah and that's just the nature of uh say dementia alzheimer's that's the the nature of that and, and hopefully you know i, I think they're starting to make some progress, right? And I'm slowing these, slowing these things down uh, as medications and so forth, but not quick enough, unfortunately, you know, for folks that are, are struggling with that. And, and sometimes much earlier than you would expect. Sometimes I think the, uh, you know, general consensus out there is, well, that's just for like really old people, like in their nineties or hundreds. But, you know, we've seen that certainly in, in situations with clients where uh, things have actually started in their sixties or seventies. So much earlier on, in other words, it, it may maybe sooner than what you would think that you have to address some of this stuff. Absolutely. So, you know, things like uh, managing your reactions and your responses to, mm-hmm. to their outbreaks, things of that nature, building in routine every day, uh, that definitely does help with a lot of this. And then uh, confabulation. Tell, yeah. us, tell us about confabulation. Yeah, so that's, uh, and I'm sure, you know, we, we've all experienced this a little bit, especially you know, with elderly people, sometimes they'll they'll make stuff up you know they'll they'll kind of make up some stories and things and um and you know the family will kind of look at each other like what did that actually happen you know it it could be something from the past or whatever and sometimes it's just selective memory right i mean i think we probably all have some of that right but uh basically it's trying to fill in the gaps and they say it's actually kind of mentally it's a defense mechanism um you know because you because you don't know i mean basically you're you just don't know and so you fill in the gaps right so but you know for the caregiver on the caregiver side of things or the family, uh, it can be hard to deal with um, and, and can lead to some frustration, especially uh, it's like, well, we just told you that, right? Or, we, you know, what do you mean you don't know what happened five minutes ago, right? right. Or what you ate for lunch, you know, things like that. Um, we hear that a lot. It, it can be a lot of frustration and and uh, kind of some tension within the families, you know, as, as that happens, because it's, um, it's, uh, it's something that probably is not getting better either. It's probably getting worse as time goes on. Absolutely. And so that kind of goes back to that being mindful, right? Mm-hmm. Of, right. Of your present state and where everything's at, and not throwing gas on the fire for that one. Yeah. So, yeah. So really it's just about kind of controlling what you can, you know, and planning, planning as much in the advance for this stuff as much as you possibly can. Right. Absolutely. So when it comes to financial planning, uh, we talk about this stuff a lot uh, with people. And again, it's some uncomfortable conversations sometimes mm-hmm. when it comes into a, a state planning type topics, because that means that, well, it means somebody's passed away um, or or somebody is not you know, as healthy as they were before. Yeah. Somebody's in some kind of a decline or or maybe uh, even gets to the point where they can't make decisions for themselves, either, either health care or financial um, so uh, certainly that's something to visit with an attorney about, you know, that gets into legal stuff, right? But a lot of those conversations we, we talk about with clients just to introduce those topics and, and see, you know, ha- have those been things that have been addressed? 
So oftentimes the average client for at Keystone is about 58 years old. So what that means is that, uh, you know, a lot of people, if their parents are still living, of course, you know, they're getting older and mm -hmm. probably, it, you know, you get into your 70s, 80s, everybody, right, is probably going to have some level of slowing down and, and needing more help uh, from people. So this does come up a lot. And um, I think it's getting better uh, maybe than what it once was. I, I think the uh, in the past, especially for people who went through the Great Depression, people tended to be, uh, you know, a really private about their money and, you know, coffee cans mm -hmm. in the backyard with cash and things like that. Uh, we're not seeing that as much. So hopefully communication is getting better, but introducing these topics as early as possible. And uh, in other words, understanding basic things, if you're talking to mom and dad, uh, have have you done any estate planning? Do you have do you have a will? Do you have a power of attorney? If something were to happen to you, you yeah. know where, where would we go to find those things? Do you have a lockbox at the bank? Um, you know some of these right. things. Where you know where is your bank? Maybe uh, everybody doesn't know that. Or do you have more than one bank? If you've spread out your money across twenty banks for the FBIC yeah. coverage or, or something like that. I mean, it's yeah. important that people, that somebody, right? Somebody in the family kind of knows, right? And even even just having that conversation. So what do you want to happen when, right? you know, or mm -hmm. if, yeah, right? Um, one of the best things I ever heard was uh, suggest love letters, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. really what that means yeah. is someone said, hey, you know, mom and dad, or they know, they know something's happened and they know they're progressing, mm -hmm. but- while they still have the ability, you know, writing love letters to your loved ones to let them know, mm -hmm. you know, in advance what you have doesn't mean you have to give it to them right away, but just just writing down memories, things that they remember about you for mm -hmm. in the future when yeah. things do go bad. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and it, yeah, again, it could be a progression. It could be a cognitive decline. And I remember Ronald Reagan said that was the slow goodbye. He, he actually wrote a letter um, right to the country and right. his wife, right? Uh, and that was true. You know, it was over a number of years that, that, that uh, you know, that progressed for him. So, uh, but sometimes it's sudden. I mean, none of us have any guarantees, right? Yeah. Uh, that something could happen suddenly. So I, I think that's good for everybody, but especially folks as they get older and maybe introducing that. Uh, one resource uh, that we've used actually with uh, with my folks is something called StoryWorth. And yeah, I'm not a stockholder or anything. Don't worry. <laughs> but StoryWorth, uh, if you just go to storyworth.com or Google it, it's actually really cool because sometimes when you think about that love letter concept or, you know, kind of writing things to to leave to loved ones, a blank page can be kind of intimidating, um, mm -hmm. right? Versus story worth. What it does is very simple is that it actually emails you and you can have it, the, you can adjust the frequency, but it emails you questions and you just answer the questions. You just reply. In other words, yeah, it's very uh, automated. Yeah. And yeah. then you just have to reply to it and it basically captures it for you. It does. And th then the output at the end is actually uh, allows you to order a book then or books, you know, if you want to, like mm -hmm. really nice, you know, kind of quality books. You can even put photos in, you know, maybe you could help. And we helped my dad, for example, uh, actually last at, at Thanksgiving, we actually helped him and he add some photos and things. Uh, to his, but it's pretty cool. You know, you think about that, um, you know, we, we, we hope that people are going to live forever, but we know they won't. Um, right. right. And so having that as a gift is just huge. Absolutely. That's a great idea. So really just, you know, understanding how, how this can impact, you know, your retirement savings. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, for some people, uh, the, being a caregiver involves leaving the workforce maybe early. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've All seen right. that in, in a lot of cases. Absolutely. Yeah. We've seen that, whether that's, you know, being a temporary thing or making a permanent change for that. But then also, you know, how you're going to pay for your long-term care services. Mm -hmm. uh, do you already have insurance? Is it something that's still available or is it just too expensive? Mm -hmm. You know, but having a plan in advance uh, and talking through your options is a lot more helpful than just kind of winging it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. One thing on the the work front is if you work for an, a company, especially big companies, a lot of times we'll offer employee benefits around this. Mm -hmm. That if you need to care, it used to be just if it was a you know maturity leave or something like that. And then a lot of times there's you know kind of some other options where you're able to take a leave of absence or use short term to, uh, disability benefits uh, if you need to be a caregiver. Um, so it, it may not be forever, but it could be for a chunk of time that you actually could 
leave work and, and maybe even be compensated to some degree mm -hmm. uh, while you're doing that. So make sure you understand your employee benefits and, and understand their employee benefits too, right? I mean, you could have somebody that that's uh, younger, maybe that, uh, that is the person you're going to be caring for, but if they're still employed, it could be that they actually qualify for some kind of a short-term disability or long-term care benefit. Absolutely. So um, yeah, and again, the funding is important. Uh, the, the money is important, but the emotions are important too. So uh, being organized, just asking the questions. I think that's kind of the key is, you know, if, if yeah. we introduce any value into the process, I think that's what it is. In a lot of cases is just asking the questions and kind of getting people thinking about about uh, maybe what they, they haven't considered or what they don't know or need to research a little bit more. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then being, being willing to have those hard conversations, right. you know. Um, and then, of course, you know, tips for friends and family. So uh, this one is... I don't know. I, I kind of like this one actually. And so, uh, because I think Josh and I, we've come from, from this side of it, I think a little bit more, especially with yes. yeah friends and family or even advisor, you know, when clients come to us with these things and, and what approach do we have to take to it? You know, the things you can say, but, uh, really great ideas. So just understanding that you're, you really can't understand. Yeah. What you're that you're not, in, you're not in the caregiver shoes. So Yeah. Right. Yeah, as as much as you might have some be, be able to explain what it's like, you still don't know what it's like. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, being there for for both of them, for the caregiver and the person who's needing care. Yeah, absolutely. Right? That's important. Or just being able to do the little things, you know, being on time, offering to drive uh, whenever there's, you know, communication, just kind of being to the point. Yeah. You know, don't make it a huge paragraph that somebody has to read and digest while they're trying to do all this stuff. Yeah. And again, we talked about that before that if you're the person that is the caregiver, uh, that's helpful for other people, because I think a lot of people want to help. I mean, they're, they're willing to yeah. help. They just don't know how. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, kind of on both sides of it, uh, having ways, even if it's just bringing a meal, right. It, it could be Absolutely. something simple. Absolutely. You know, not, not uh, offering free advice, no matter how much we all love to do yeah. it. And Nobody likes unsolicited advice. Right? That, <laughs> absolutely. So just those little things that you can kind of help out with along the way. Um, but then a really kind of also life after caregiving. So no matter where you're at in this situation, right? If it's if it mm -hmm. hasn't started yet, if you're in the middle of it, whatnot, there will be life after caregiving, yeah. right? And how do you kind of prepare yourself, uh, you know, to do that and and get back into the swing of that. Yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean that your loved one's passed away either. Uh, we've seen that a bunch of times mm -hmm. where maybe uh, it, it could be that uh, may, maybe if there's multiple kids or multiple fam family members, it could be that people kind of take turns, right? I mean, they kind of pass the baton at some point and, and uh, you know, somebody else is kind of helping. If, if you're trying to keep them at home, also could be, you know, where you've now accepted some help, you know, with cleaning or maybe even the caregiving. Sometimes mm -hmm. it actually helps to have that person. This is what we hear, right, from other people is it helps to have that home health care person or a person coming in because then that allows you as the caregiver actually to do the stuff yeah. that only you can do, which is emotionally connect with your loved one. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's a tough one for a lot of people is accepting the help, mm -hmm. uh, you know, cause we all get in that mindset of, no, I can do it. I can take care of it. Yeah. I can do this on my own, but being able to step out and say, yes, I need help for this. That's a huge step and, and a mm -hmm. good, a good first step towards that self care thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And yeah, taking care of yourself again, we can't stress that enough. And there's a progression on that, we're told, um, mm -hmm. in that, uh, you know, at the beginning, it may seem like, hey, I got this, you know, I, I can handle this. And then, you know, it's, it, it can kind of build over time, right? Uh, just as really. time passes. And uh, so it, it's really important that you're taking care of yourself in all aspects, right? Physically, emotionally. Uh, mentally that that there uh, there are ways that you're able to care for yourself too absolutely yeah and then that's where that's uh you know those previous notes that you've been keeping that to-do list for the future yeah comes break in. that thing out and <laughs> yep, pop that out yeah. and say what was i thinking back then it's like right. oh yes yeah and the role of a financial planner too a certified financial planner uh, right we, but the role of a financial planner is pretty important um, it almost you know our, for our client relationships even though yeah it's a business relationship obviously we're doing doing something uh, you know for you business wise managing money things like that but it does feel like a family friend relationship um, in most cases right we, we get to know each other pretty well we know each other we've kind of connected maybe even outside of the office and other um, other ways so we want to be able to support you and 
and certainly be here. And, and we do have a lot of those conversations. Um, you know, it's it's not all about the money. Sometimes it, it's life stuff that we end up digging through. Absolutely. Yeah. So really, uh, you know, there are some uh, resources that we do have available. We can send these out. Yeah, we have them in <laughs> uh, electronic PDF as well. We so uh, just let us know uh, if you'd be interested in receiving those. But uh, really, it just kind of goes over a lot of this stuff, right? Kind it of the tips and tricks of this. It does. Um, Hopefully it's helpful, uh, maybe to, as an outline almost. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what it feels like is an outline that will kind of trigger some things afterwards. If you're going back to your family, going back to a parent or somebody else, yep. uh, because maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you're not actually a caregiver today, but you're kind of saying, hey, this this could come up, right? This could be a right. thing in the future. Uh, starting to get organized, that can be huge. And Absolutely. Really, I think that's what the caregiver's guide will do is it'll start to introduce those conversations. Yep, Absolutely. Yeah. And then of course, Keystone. So being your comprehensive financial planner, this is one of many things that we look at and talk to our clients about, right? Yeah. Which is unusual. Um, I'll, I'll say that in our industry is that uh, a lot of people call themselves a financial advisor, investment advisor, and, and lots of good people out there for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but most are, are just kind of handling one aspect of your finances. It's probably just managing the money or maybe if it's an insurance agent or something like that, all good people. But uh, what we do though, is we're really the quarterback that's looking at everything. We're, we're doing a lot more for clients than, than just one thing. Um, and that progresses too, as, as time goes on, it, it does yeah. introduce a lot of these topics, right? Estate planning and, and applying for Medicare. I mean, all these things that we kind of go through eventually, right? The longer we live, we're going to hit certain milestones and Absolutely. have certain things that come up. So uh, it's our job to coordinate all that with you and, and as much as possible, make the complex simple. Um, so, you know, taking a lot of these topics that uh, may seem daunting on your own, but mm -hmm. having somebody who is a fiduciary, fiduciary means that we have to look out for your best interest. Legally, we, we have to look out for your best interest. So, and we want to too, right? Yeah. But uh, having somebody in your corner like that is is pretty indispensable. So um, obviously, again, it's a business, we get paid, but we also care about you and want to make sure that uh, you're taken care of and uh, your family is taken care of. Absolutely. And of course, anytime you work with Keystone, it's not just Josh and I sitting behind mm -hmm. the scenes. You know, we have a whole team of this um, really great experienced people who uh, all have that same drive, right? To just kind of take care of our clients. Yeah, I think for all of us, that's one thing that you'll notice that's in the DNA of all of us is that we care about people. We, we really genuinely mm -hmm. care about our clients and the relationships we get to have. So for those of you who are clients already, thank you. Uh, thank you for your continued business. Uh, many of you have been clients for 20 plus years in some cases. Some of you are a bit newer, so welcome. Uh, welcome to the family. Uh, but uh, we, we definitely want to continue serving you. And uh, for those of you who aren't clients yet, uh, certainly continue to stay plugged into what we're doing. Uh, we do webinars, we do the podcast. We, we, we try to keep these conversations going throughout the year, uh, not just when you're in for your review meeting. Absolutely. So, so contact information for us is pretty simple. It's just get Josh at KeystoneFinancial.com, Jeremy at KeystoneFinancial.com. Our website, no surprise, is KeystoneFinancial.com. And you'll find a lot of other great resources out there, um, as, as well as great pictures of our team. And so again, if you're newer to us, a great way to get to know us a bit before we actually have that more in-depth conversation. Uh, but certainly the topics that we talked about today are fair game. Everything we've talked about, about today is kind of normal for us mm -hmm. that we talk about in those review meetings and individual conversations. Yeah. One thing, if you don't know already, is that Josh and I have no problem having those tough conversations. Yeah. You know, it yeah. goes with it goes with the job. I think we've just gotten used to it over the years. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's better to have those tough conversations up front and, uh, you know, have them out than be sitting on them and worry about them. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. So thanks for the um, uh, lot of interaction, Greg, by the way. We'll kind of jump into some of the comments and Q&A. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We got some good comments here. So, um, you know, here's a good one, actually. I learned a good way to preserve the dignity of a person who is receiving care is to ask permission before doing something for that person. Mm. Give them a say in the matter. I love that. I yeah. love that. That is a great idea. Yeah, great tip. Yep. Um, and yes, uh, so we did have someone also say, notice that the dates on a lot of the uh, home care stuff was June 2021. Mm -hmm. um, updated numbers, obviously those have, uh, uh, they have increased uh, at least by inflation. Obviously the odd thing, I was looking this up just the other day, mm -hmm. the odd thing about that specific number of the home health care uh, that has actually either stayed the same or become less expensive over the last few years. Uh, 
oddly enough, uh, mainly because I think the medical industry is liking to provide that type of service. So there are more nurses that are, are wanting to kind of, uh, you know, do that thing where they go to people's houses mm-hmm. as opposed mm-hmm. to go to the hospital to care for them. So uh, it has been a couple of years since those numbers were updated specifically for this presentation, but that number has, hasn't really changed a whole lot, believe it or not. Yeah. Facility care um, has got more expensive, but you're yeah. right. A lot of times these numbers are a year behind uh, because they're, they're com- kind of compiling all of it. But uh, suffice to say, uh, facility care has gotten more expensive over the last couple of years. Absolutely. And so that's kind of where they make a lot of the money, because if you think about it, the facility care is the one that has a lot of overhead. It does. Right. It has yeah. the buildings, Especially it has right the now. beds, it yeah. has all of that, as opposed to a trained medical professional coming into your house mm-hmm. just basically providing the services for that. It's, it can be a lot better of an issue for that if yeah. you're able to. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, we got another one. Culture in the U.S. is to pay for care uh, where the family is in a support role. Yeah, not the same in different countries, mm-hmm. right, it's obviously. True. But uh, some countries uh, that we can go, we could have an entire presentation. Oh, yeah, just different, different the, cultures and different how they, cultures how they yeah, and how absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But yes, that is a good point. So, um yeah. To, so, yes, we will email the resources uh, mm-hmm. out to uh, anybody yeah. on here. So, yes, we'll get them out to you if you've requested them. Yeah. You can use those emails that are on there as well if you have any specific questions or um, if you want to make that a little bit quicker. I have those on my uh, in my email inbox right now. So you can feel free to email me directly and I will send those directly to you after this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So that's great. Any more questions? Uh, let's see. Can you send me anything you have on those forms? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, everybody will get that. Yeah, everybody will yeah. get those. So very, very good. So, yeah. hey, yeah, I think that's it, though, for questions. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for the interaction. Uh, again, big benefit of being on here live is that you got to uh, you got to ask us questions but you can certainly do that after the fact. And uh, even if you're not in the situation right now, more than likely, you probably know somebody who is. So we're happy to provide these resources to anybody else, friends, Absolutely. family, coworkers. And you know, of course, if somebody is looking for a great financial planner, especially a certified financial planner, we're happy to visit with them as well. Uh, that's almost 100% of how we grow is just by word of mouth at this point. Uh, you won't notice a lot of billboards and uh, you know advertisements and things like that be- because that's the best way for us to to continue growing is just by the people that you care about and know already. Absolutely. Yep. And so actually we do have one final one. Um, uh, it was a question about Medicare mm-hmm. offering some long-term care benefits for very short term. So yes, that mm-hmm. there is. Uh, I would never tell somebody that you can rely on Medicare for long-term care mm-hmm. because it's, it, they will it's very specific. That. It's yeah. very specific. Yeah. It's for a very short amount of time. Yeah. Um, but it is out there and it's literally like 90 days. Yeah. And, and you have to have been admitted to the hospital beforehand uh, and had to have been there for a certain number of days is very, yes. very, very specific. Very in other specific. words, yeah. So definitely don't count on that, but also it, it's one that you want to make sure that, um, you're asking the question, right? You don't want to leave money on the table, right? If, if they're going to cover the cost, you want to make sure that you're using that. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and yes, feel free. So this will this recording will be up on our YouTube channel, usually within the day. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, if you'd like to share it out to anybody, life groups, whatever, please feel free to do so. Yep. Um, it's Absolutely. out there for you. All right. Thank you, everybody. And, uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Have a wonderful week and uh, God bless. Take care. You're still online. You're seeing our after hours. It's the after party. The after <laughs>